Hello everyone, this is my Atari model Indus GT disk drive, which I've owned for many years but which has been in storage for at least 10 years. The Indus was built between 1983 and 1987 when the rights to it were sold to LDW. There were versions of the drive for the C64 and the Apple II. The interesting thing about the Indus is that it was built around a Z80 CPU and by installing an add-on board called a RAM charger and increasing the internal memory to 64K, you can run CPM on the drive and access it via terminal software on an Atari 8-bit. What that meant, of course, was that you could run industry standards such as WordStar on your Atari. Having used it in many other machines, I've always loved CPM and I've always wanted to run it on the Atari 8-bit. The RAM charger board is very scarce, but there are plans to build your own available online. Alternatively, and for just €10, Euros, you can buy the SRAM charger, a modern interpretation of the original board based around a single RAM chip. So I bought an SRAM charger and fished my GT out of storage. And the first thing to do, of course, was to see if it was still working. I tried a disc to see if it would spin up and, despite never having replaced the belt, all seemed well. So having decided or determined that uh, the drive appears to be in working order, it's time to fit the SRAM charger. Now this SRAM charger came from Jürgen, you can find him online. It was actually cheaper than trying to make my own when I checked out the price of the chips. Uh, yeah, it's cheaper to buy it, weirdly, although in the UK, we now pay huge shipping costs from the um, EU, which is something of a shame, but there you are. That's the way it is nowadays. So let's just have a look at this. This will give it 64K, so let's bring the, the uh, RAM up to 64K, uh, allowing it or enabling it to run CPM. And after all, that's what this is all about. So let's just pop him back in there for a moment. Put that there. So now we need to take apart the Indus. There are two screws on the back here, so I'm going to undo those. That is going to allow the little back plate to come off. So that to one side. I've returned the drive over and four screws underneath. then we should be able to slide the cover off the drive. So this J3 is the connector for the SRAM charger so we're going to simply plug it in there there's nothing more to do once it's plugged in we will Close the drive up and then there is a little utility program to determine 
whether it's recognized and working. Now the board should fit completely over these pins and be aware that you really do have to press that down quite hard to get it to locate successfully. So I suggest putting your thumbs underneath as well so that you don't stra strain the board in any way. But there, that looks like it is in place. Okay, so now we can put the drive back together again. Given that there is no error 61, it was time to open the drive up again and investigate. Removing the SRAM charger is tricky because it's a tight fit. Then I removed the drive mech. Now there's no need to remove the top board to do this. To get the mech out, just carefully pull off the 34-way connector at the rear and then undo the four mounting screws. These three connectors on the side simply unplug. And now it's just a matter of carefully wiggling the drive out from under the front bezel and then lifting it clear. Removing the drive gives access to the bottom board and this has the Z80, the disc controller, the onboard RAM and the firmware. The EEPROM is a standard 2732 and it was obvious that mine had the older firmware version 1.1. CPM will only run on version 1.2 of the firmware. So that meant, of course, that it was time for a swap. Fortunately, I had a 2732 in stock. It just needed to be erased. So after 10 minutes in the eraser, I burned a factory copy of 1.2, stuck a label on it, straightened the slightly bent legs and fitted it back to the board. I rebuilt the drive and then I connected the drive to my 130XE and powered it up and it all seemed to be well.
So then it was time to test it with CPM tool, which is the little utility that runs the drive through various tests to make sure that the SRAM charger is actually working. So switch on the Indus. Okay, so they did its, uh, its internal checks there. And if we jump to track 39, yeah, okay. So that's looking good. Monitor is already on. So I'm going to load the RAM charger testing utility. Put that in there. Turn this on. You probably can't see anything on here south of the Hernet uh, flickering, but I'll talk you through it as we go through it. And uh, yeah, you know, we'll uh, see if it works. So let's just see what's, what's on this disk. Okay, so we've got this cpmtool.com here, and this is what's going to test the RAM charger and see if we now have a working SRAM charger. Okay, so we've got a number of options here. One, RAM charger check, testing RAM charger, okay. Press any key. Okay. The first thing to do, this is an Atari disc, actually, uh, an Atari boot disc or an Atari disc format. And uh, this holds the terminal. There's a 40 or 80 column terminal that you can access on here. And it's the terminal software which gives you access to the CPM computer, which is effectively the Indus GT. It's acting as a, a computer in its own right running CPM. And the terminal on the 130 is gonna give us access to that uh, computer. So let's boot this and see what happens. Right, F and return for a 40 column display. Type E and return for an 80 column display. Okay, let's have the 80 column display. E and return. Okay. So we can just see a cursor in the top corner. So at this point, what we need to do is take this disc out, the terminal disc. And we have this disc, which is the CPM boot disc, which I'm going to put in here. And now what we must do in order to boot CPM, we're going to press the drive type button here and then holding that down press the error button and that hopefully will boot CPM so drive type and press error okay well it's certainly doing something I can let go of that now okay we are future CPM 2.2 rev 1 hit return to continue copyright 1979 digital research and an A prompt because of course now we're running CPM. So having boosted CPM, then I think I'm gonna call this project finished.